Hello Eagles, I'm Jasmine Lawrence. And I'm Destiny Brunson. And this is Eagle News TV. This past week, Eagle News covered the Higher Learning Forum celebrating Black History Month. The event was known as FGCU's inaugural African American Culture and Appreciation Day. The featured guest speaker was Dr. Peterson, a Tuskegee Airman. Let's take a look. The event was held in honor of Black History Month and acknowledged prominent historical figures such as the Tuskegee Airmen and their role in World War II. Jared Eady, the Vice President of the Lee County Black Historical Society, was the keynote speaker. He talked about the importance of Black History Month and why it's needed. Do we really need an African American History Month in this country? The question is quite simple. Until the day when all these individuals that I mentioned today are etched in the minds of all of our students, then the inclusion must continue. Until every textbook and every curriculum includes the name of Peter Salem and Salem Four, and the individuals that we do honor tonight, the valiant soldiers of World War I, World War II, Vietnam, and all the other wars that we fight here in this country, then Black History Month must continue. Until we have the day where every student, without regard of color, creed, and nationality, feels like the American story and dream when our founding fathers said, we the people, in order to form a more perfect nation. The we and the people must include all of us. So I issue this challenge to you all tonight. Go forth understanding that you are the legacy, that you stand on the shoulders of greatness, that you are here because someone else was. You are here because someone else was denied. You are the legacy and the hope and dreams of your forefathers. So what are you doing to make a better month as Black History Month? What are you doing to make a better life as an American citizen? So the challenge is quite simple. Live a life worthy of the calling you have received. For you have received a calling in education, not everyone in your position is able to afford. Dr. Benjamin Payton, the former president of Tuskegee University, was a featured guest who surprised attendees by closing the event with some impromptu advice. I will close by saying this. What should be most clear is that even the most difficult, pernicious, terrible, awful, ugly situations in life. Even when people are determined that they will put their feet on your neck and keep you down, even if they have to keep themselves down, life is full of resilience. And the main thing that any person, any people must learn is that you can be whatever you want to be. No matter what anybody else says or does. Because that's the kind of world God made. And we are the kind of people that he created. So go forth, hit those books. The students who served Phi Beta Sigma, Zeta Phi Beta, Black Student Alliance and student government were the hosts of this event. And finally, for this week, Eco News asked students what they thought the best local venues were at the beginning of the semester. The Stereo Five Guides Burgers and Fries won for Best Burger category. Reporting on location, here's Amarin. Hey Eagles, I'm here with Angelo, the general manager here at the Stereo Five Guys, and Valerie, the crew member who's been here since day one. Um, we're presenting the Best Burger Venue Award to them. Um, as they were elected Best Burger by students. So here you go, and Thank congratulations. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I had a couple questions. Um, how, does, how did the name Five Guys start? Like, why did they choose that name for this venue? Uh, it was started by five brothers in uh, Virginia um, in 1986. The, uh, they went to their father, or their father gave them a choice, either go to college or start, uh, start a restaurant. They started a restaurant. And luckily for us and everybody in Southwest Florida, they did. Uh, it's the number one uh, franchise in the country at the time. And it's the fastest growing uh, franchise in the country and it's great food, great people, obviously. Yes, so, right here. And that's how it started. And what makes a Five Guys Burger different from other burgers? Uh, well, everything is fresh. Um, we roll our meat every morning. Our buns come in fresh every day. Our ingredients are cut every day here in the store. Um, got a, a high fat content, which doesn't which doesn't hurt uh, the taste, and uh, it's made with love, yes. which is the main ingredient, right, Val? Yes. 
Love is very important. Okay, well can you demonstrate the love you put into this burger? Sure. Absolutely. She's gonna start by putting on her gloves, safety first, always. My hands are washed. We're gonna do the Five Guys All the Way Burger, which is our most popular, which okay. has everything on it, yep. You start with uh, mustard and ketchup on the bottom bun. Rip onions and mushrooms. They're grilled portobello mushrooms, by the way. Okay. We've got our lettuce, lettuce, our fresh iceberg lettuce, and our dill pickles. We got our hand cut tomatoes that Valerie cut this morning. And then we've got our main ingredient, which are the two patties, which is over here to the right, and our cheese. Craft American, and we've got our finished product, okay. our Five Guys All the Way Burger. And that would be a veggie all the way. <laughs> <laughs> a veggie all the way. How much does the burger sell for? Um, well, they range from four twenty-nine up to six ninety-nine mm -hmm. uh, for a bacon cheeseburger. Uh, would be the highest, and the lowest would be a hamburger. And then, um, how long does it approximately take to make each burger? About seven minutes. Yeah, you order it, we throw it on the grill, we cook it, and then it's ready. That's okay. including fries, seven yep. minutes. Burger and fries, seven minutes, out the door. Amazing. And um, the malt vinegar that you have out as yes. a condiment, what is that used for? That's a New England uh, thing. Uh, people in New England put it on their french fries. Mm -hmm. And they, people love it. I don't know. Did I it? like vinegar and french fries. She likes vinegar on the fries. What That's good. Vinegary flavor. <laughs> it's good. If you like it's, vinegar, it's a vinegar people kind of thing. It's like ketchup without the tomato almost. Do you see a lot of customers using it and yes. wearing it? Oh, yes. It's very popular. We have a lot of people in Southwest Florida from the Northeast, as you know, so they love it. Okay. Well, thanks for having us today and for demonstrating the burger. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming. And um, thanks very much. Thank you for the award. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so we've seen the burger demonstrated, and now back to Destiny. Thanks, Amarin, and congratulations, Five Guys. We now turn to Vale for World News. Thanks, Destiny. Going on around the globe, Germany has been asked by the European Council, specifically the European Committee for the Prevention of Torture and Inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment to end its practice of castrating sex offenders. The council states that the practice is not recognized by international standards, and while the surgery is offered as an option currently, there is no guarantee that there is always full consent on behalf of the offender. However, German authorities argue that surgical castration for, from abnormal sex drive and those who agree to the surgery do so in hopes of having less jail time. In Madagascar, a new species of chameleon has been discovered. The species, now known as Brooksia micra, grows to a maximum length of 29 millimeters and lives in a limestone islet. Sci scientists believe that the lizards are extremely tiny due to island dwarfism, in which evolution causes a species to become smaller in order to adapt to a restricted environment. Finally, Australian miners have uncovered the country's largest pink diamond, weighing in at 12.76 carats. Once the stone is cut and polished, expect it to worth $1.07 million. Thanks for tuning in, and now we turn into Mike for Today in History. Thanks, Vail. Throughout 1985 and the following years, the Soviet Union and the U.S. had been in opposition and agreeing on nuclear weapons reduction. On February 28, 1987, however, President Gorbachev announced he was ready to proceed with the negotiations of the INF Treaty, which was finally signed the following December. The Soviet Union reduced approximately 1,500 mid-range missiles, while the U.S. cut its number by about half. Two years prior, on February 28, 1983, the final episode of MASH aired on television. The popular sitcom had run for 11 seasons. The show was based on a 1968 novel by Richard Hooker and was set to take place during the Korean War from the point of view of the American front line. There's a little bit of history, and now we go to Holly with our sports update. Now for sports. This week, congratulations to the women's swimming and diving team who are the 2012 CCSA conference champions. In women's basketball, the Lady Eagles won 76-63 against USC Upstate on Friday. 
On Saturday, the Lady Eagles received a second victory with a score of 71-64 to against ETSU. As for men's basketball, they lost against USC 87-74 to and against ETSU 84-71. to Women's softball team traveled to the UCF Invitational. Junior Brittany Pugh led FGCU to a 5-1 win on day one versus Eastern Michigan. On the final day of the UCF Invitational, the softball team won again against Eastern Michigan with a score of 1-0. In baseball, the team returned to Swanson Stadium with a weekend series against Bryant, winning three days in a row. As for the final scores, Friday, February 24th, 5 to 4, Saturday 8 to 1, and finally Sunday's score was 5 to 1. On Wednesday, February 29th, the women's basketball team will go against ETSU once again in the, in the Atlantic Sun Conference Championship at 12 p.m. Also on Wednesday, the, bas the baseball team will face Michigan at Swanson Stadium beginning at 6.30 p.m. On Thursday, March 1st, men's tennis competes against Kennesaw State at 7 p.m. And finally, the softball team will be heading to Clearwater for the USF Invitational over the weekend. We wish them luck. Thanks, Holly, and thank you for watching this week's episode of Eagle News TV. Be sure to tune in next time, and have a great week, Eagles.